Facts Verse presents The Tragic Lives of Conjoined Twins Daisy and Violet Hilton. Daisy and Violet Hilton were conjoined twins who were born in England in the early 1900s. Back then, they were referred to as Siamese twins. When the sisters were born, they were connected at the buttocks and the hips. When they were born, their doctors didn't want to separate them in fear that one or both of the twins would die. This is not common today. If the sisters had been born in the 21st century, there is a very good chance that they could have been surgically separated without any dangerous complications for either of them. The reason for this is that Daisy and Violet didn't share blood circulation and they each had their own organs. This is not the case with many conjoined twins today, such as Abby and Brittany Hensel. Abby and Brittany have to remain conjoined because they share a body and all of their organs. Although Abby and Brittany's condition is more severe than Daisy's and Violet's, their life was nowhere as happy as Brittany's and Abby's. This is the story of the tragic lives of conjoined twins Daisy and Violet Hilton. Abandoned by their mother When the twins were born and their mother discovered that they were conjoined, she abandoned them. From the age of three years old and throughout their adulthood, they were displayed at various sideshows, also known as freak shows. In the 1920s and 30s, the twins became famous for their burlesque performances and their vaudeville acts. They even appeared in a few films. Before the twins were able to reach financial independence, they were forced to deal with the heavy hand of their guardians. When the world grew bored of the twins, they got jobs as clerks at a grocery store. This is just the short version of the twins' story, but the long version is very sad. About the Twins Daisy and Violet were born in Brighton, England in February 1908. When they were born, their mother's obstetrician told her that they would die within a month after being born. The doctor was wrong, and the twins lived to be 60 years old. As adults, they were 4 feet 9 inches tall. They weighed a total of 166 pounds. When their mother, Kate Skinner, gave birth, she wasn't married. At that time, children born in England with birth defects were called monsters. Kate was sure that her daughter's condition was her punishment for her actions. Soon after their birth, their mother sold them to a woman named Mary Hilton. The twins referred to her as Auntie. She didn't take them out of kindness, she did so out of greed. After giving up her twins, Kate had two more children. She had a son named Frederick in 1910 and a daughter named Ethel Kate in 1912. Kate died as a complication to childbirth a month after Ethel was born. She was only 25 years old. Put on display When Mary took the twins in, she realized that she could use them to make money. Before long, she was using the girls to put on her own sideshows. She set up a room in the back of a British pub and for a few pennies, people could examine the girls. The girls remember people coming in and lifting their dresses to look at their conjoined bodies. Years later, the girls wrote a memoir. There was a section that read, Our earliest and only recollections are the smell of brown ale, cigars, and pipes with visitors' hands lifting our dresses to see where we were attached. The girls were abused. When the girls were growing up, Auntie had many men in her life. The girls called all of them Sir. For years, Auntie and her Sirs abused the girls physically and emotionally. Auntie was making money off the girls, and if they didn't do as she asked, she would hit them. If she was not pleased with them, she would whip them in the back and shoulders with the buckle end of a belt. When the girls were three years old, Auntie wanted to make more money. The twins had some success in Australia and Germany, but Auntie wanted more, and she knew she could get that in the U.S. When they were eight years old, Auntie tried to take them to San Francisco. Initially, they were denied entry to the U.S. because they were deemed medically unfit. After Auntie involved the local media, they were allowed into the country. They had owners. Auntie had a biological daughter named Edith. The twins called both of them their owners. When Auntie died, Edith became their guardian. She and her husband, Myers, took care of them. They were so worried that someone would get involved and run their money-making scheme that they never let the twins out of their sight. They even shared a room at night. Perform or be institutionalized 
The twins were held captive by Edith and Myers. They would force the girls to practice their vaudeville act. For hours, they would be forced to practice their instruments. If they refused, Meyer would threaten to put them in an institution. Never paid. Audiences loved the twins in the 1920s when they were in their teens. They even appeared with Bob Hope and Charlie Chaplin. At one point, the girls were earning $5,000 per week. Sadly, Ethel and Myers kept all of the earnings, and the girls never saw a penny. Harry Houdini changed the twins' lives. When the famous illusionist Harry Houdini heard about the girls, he took an interest in them. He met with the girls and told them to learn more about themselves. After reading newspapers, they were shocked that they were so famous. Houdini put the girls in contact with a lawyer who helped them to become emancipated from Ethel and Myers, and they were awarded $80,000 when they were 21 years old. Sex and Marriage When the girls were emancipated, the world opened up for them. They fell in love and were married at two separate times. Sadly, neither marriage lasted. When asked about how they dealt with having sex, the girl stated that the other would turn over and read a book and eat an apple. Books and Film The girls became more famous when they starred in the 1932 film Freaks. They also wrote a book called The Lives and Loves of the Hilton Sisters. They also starred in a film about their lives called Chains for Life. When their fame died out, they were poor. They started working for a hot dog vendor and then as grocery store clerks. In their spare time, they would perform for their co-workers. The Girls' Deaths Despite what the doctors said, the girls lived a long life. In 1969, the authorities were called to their home. Daisy had died from flu complications. Violet died several days later. They were 60 years old at the time of their death. Subscribe for more.